Today we will be taking T notes on uncertainties in graphs. We will be discussing the line of best fit, gradients, and error bars. Let's begin. When working with graphs in physics, it is common to use scatter plot graphs. These are where multiple measurements are represented as individual points. There are three kinds of patterns that are seen with scatter plots. The first kind of pattern the graph can have is where the pattern increases upwards and has a positive slope. If the points create a fairly straight line through all the points, it would be a perfect positive correlation. The points can also be more spread out, but if there is an upwards progression of these points, then this would have a low degree of positive correlation. The closer that the dots are to each other, alongside with the upwards trend as shown here, we would then state that this graph has a high degree of positive correlation. A graph is said to have a negative correlation if there is a decreasing pattern or a negative slope. The points can be closely packed together or farther apart. Again, below we see a perfect negative correlation, a low degree of correlation with the points spread further apart, and over here a high degree of negative correlation with the dots more closely packed together. If the points do not show either an increasing or decreasing pattern, as in this graph here, we can then state that there is no correlation. And this is a third kind of graph that can be obtained using a scatter plot graph. When using a scatter plot graph, we use something called a line of best fit. And this helps us to understand the data and to determine a trend. A line of best fit is a line that is drawn through the points in a graph. The line matches as many points as possible. It does not always pass through all the data points. And this line of best fit can be used to determine the gradient and the y-intercept if the line is a straight line. Look at the graph below. Notice the scattering of the various coordinates. A line has been drawn to show the best slope that the data represents. Let's learn how to draw a line of best fit. The first step is to plot the data points. The second step is to use a ruler or other straight edged object to draw a line through the points while creating an even number of points on either side. In the graph on the left, the points form almost a perfect straight line. And in this case, this is a perfect positive correlation. Choosing the two farthest points, so over here and over here, we then draw a line that connects these two. Notice how there isn't an even amount of points on either side of the line, but the line is touching most of the points. On the graph to the right is what is most normally encountered with data. Because the points are more spread out, you will have to draw a line such that the points are on both sides of the line. In fact, you might notice that the points alternate from above the line to below the line, and so on and so forth. There is, however, an even amount of points above and below the line in this graph. Notice also that the points that are closest to each other and are on different sides of the line are about the same distance from the line. This will produce the best fit line for these data points. Sometimes there may be a point that is far out from the other points. This point is called an outlier and may have been caused by errors in the measurements or in the person's calculations. Because of this error, we do not include this point when drawing a line of best fit. Let's do an example together. Here we see a graph of six points. Pause the video, use a ruler, uh, and try to practice where you would draw the line of best fit. Then start the video back up and check your answers with mine. Okay, so remembering that a line of best fit is the best representation of the slope or trend of those data points, you might have drawn a line that looks like this. However, this would be wrong. The slope is too high, given that you have these points down here below the line. If you drew a line that looked more like this, this would be correct. Because the points are pretty linear, taking two points that are far away from each other, and then drawing a line that connects these two points, would create a more true representation of the slope and the trend of the data. Let's say we obtained the following data to explore the amount of hours spent studying and the percent increase in one's marks. When we plot these coordinates on the graph, we get this scatter plot here. And when we draw a line of best fit, we would get something that looks like this. 
Using this graph, we can actually calculate the slope as well as the equation for this trend. To determine the gradient or slope, you want to choose two points that lie close to the line. Using these two coordinates, you then find the slope. Using the graph from the previous slide, it shows a coordinate of 1, 0, and 7, 6 as the two coordinates that are chosen. To find the slope, we just take the difference of the y coordinates divided by the difference of the x coordinates. Be careful to subtract the second y value from the first y value and not the other way around. When you plug in your values correctly, you will have the slope equaling 6 minus 0 divided by 7 minus 1, which will equal 1 mark per hour. This means that you can improve by one mark for each extra hour that you study. Error bars are an important part of graphs when we are taking into account uncertainties in our measurements. Error bars are crossed lines on a graph to show the range of uncertainty in our measurements. Notice in the graphs below that there are vertical lines crossed with horizontal lines. These vertical lines show the area of uncertainty for that specific y value. The horizontal lines show the range of uncertainty for that x value. Each line looks like a bar, which is how we get the term error bar. Also notice how the crossed lines create a box. This is called an error box, which is essentially the area of uncertainty for both the y and x values. Error bars can be seen and used on both curved graphs as well as straight-lined graphs. The length of each line shows the level of uncertainty for that x or y value. The last thing to know is that you may see error bars for one or both axes, depending on the scale of the graph and or how small the uncertainty is. On the left here, you see error bars that are only given for the y values. On the graph to the right, you see error bars on both the y values as well as the x values. When drawing lines of best fit for points that have error bars, we can draw these for both straight and curved lines. One thing to note is that a line of best fit should go through every single error box. If you look at the graph below, you'll see that the line of best fit does not go through each of the error boxes. If it is not possible to draw a line that goes through every single box, then your data is suspect, or you have chosen the wrong kind of line to fit. This might actually be more of a curved graph and not a line graph. So be careful and make sure that you have data points plotted correctly and that you are looking at the trend before you draw your line of best fit. You may be asked to find the final uncertainty in a graph for a straight line. The first step is to find the minimum and maximum best fit lines. The minimum best fit line is a line that is drawn from the top of the lower error box to the bottom of the highest error box. This gives you the lowest possible slope. The maximum fit line is drawn from the bottom of the lowest error box to the top of the highest error box. This gives you two lines that visually represent the lowest and the highest slopes of the trend. Now that the maximum and minimum lines of best fit have been drawn, you can find the slopes mathematically. For each line, just take two coordinates that are along that line and find the slope. Remember that slope is the rise over run, or the y values divided by the x values. For example, the coordinates in red show the maximum slope. When you take the difference of the final minus the initial y values, we get 6.939 minus 0.971. The difference of the x values is 21.8 minus 1.0. Solving for the slope, we get 0.287 equaling 0.29. When we do the same process for the minimum slope using the x and y values of the coordinates that are in black, we get a final slope of 0.234 or 0.23. To find your final uncertainty in the stated value of the slope of your best fit line, all you need to do is take your maximum slope minus your minimum slope and divide that by 2. In this case, we would have 0.29 minus 0.23, which is my minimum, and divide that all by 2, and we get an answer of 0.3, which would be this line 
in between the red and the black line. We have reached the end of the T-notes. Thank you for watching and be ready to use this information in class.